Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has urged NATO members to guarantee the protection of Ukraine's nuclear facilities. Over the weekend, Zaporizhia power plant came under fire with the United Nations atomic body warning that Russia and Ukraine are playing with fire. Well, we can get more on the situation uh, on the ground with the former senior military intelligence and security officer, Philip. Ingram, Philip, good to see you. Um, let's start by talking about nuclear power plants in Ukraine. We've heard a lot about Zaporizhia. It's been under attack numerous times. Just how practical would it be for NATO members to protect the likes of Zaporizhia? It's a good call, but totally impractical, because if we put NATO troops on the ground, they have to protect themselves. We don't know who shelled in, whether it was the Russians. The Russians accused the Ukrainians, um, and instantly it would bring NATO troops into direct conflict um, in, 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 in this Russian special military operation or the Ukrainian war, and that can't happen, because that would be the start of a, a wider European conflict, if not World War Three. What is it we're looking at here? So what we're looking at here is this is Russian MOD um, footage. They're claiming these are the attacks um, by the Ukrainians onto the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. It hasn't been verified and the, the Russian Minister of Defence is also known as the Ministry of Disinformation mm -hmm. in reality when we look at what they put out. The Ukrainians um, haven't really made a statement on this but this, after this came out this is when President Zelensky called for uh, NATO to um, protect the uh, area of the nuclear power plant. It's all part of it makes no sense for Ukraine to attack it. The potential environmental um, runoff of uh, an accident happening there, especially with the Dnieper River, would go on for many years after this conflict's finished. Um, it would fit in with the Russians trying to get a false flag incident to continue to put nuclear terror on and pressure on Ukrainian people on, the, on wider Europe and to uh, continue to fight the, the energy war they're doing inside Ukraine and with Europe. Mm. And with no um, protection from NATO member countries, that exactly. remains a, a very worrying situation. Um, let's talk about fighting in the Donbass region. It continues. What update can you give us about it, 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 do, there? it does continue. We've had um, the Russian troops move back from Kherson as the, uh, they gave the ground to the Ukrainians. Uh, the Russian troops have refurbished just from there and have now moved up into the Donetsk, Bakhmut area, where the Russians for a number of weeks now have been trying to prosecute operations and attack forward. They haven't achieved very much. They want to try and capture the whole of the Donetsk Oblast um, so that Putin can um, have some form of um, uh, success. It's not really going to happen. They've also moved some of the troops up um, a little bit further north to try and block any potential Ukrainian move through the Savatovi Kremina line and, and, and cut in an attack down into uh, the Russian areas from the north there. Um, that road is very important because it's one of a number of roads or lines of communication that are linking Russia through into where the Russian troops are and everything else. It's needed to get ammunition in, it's needed to get people in, it's needed to get equipment in. Uh, and the uh, UK Minister of Defence you know, this morning said that um, Russia is suffering severe shortages of munitions and skilled personnel. That's a very strong statement. And if Russia is running out of ammunition, um, that gives the Ukrainians uh, uh, more impetus for them to continue with the momentum they've got already. Um, we haven't mentioned the prospect of them in a while, but peace talks are being talked about again. Uh, I mean, it's been such a rocky road, hasn't it, so far? At the beginning of this conflict, uh, there was sort of back-channel talks going on, um, some high-profile talks in Turkey. And now, what's happening? What's the prospect of them? There'll always be back-channel talks going on. Um, this, is, this conflict's only ever going to end with diplomacy. However, um, you, uh, President Zelensky, the Ukrainians have got the momentum at the moment. They're setting the conditions. Um, and actually, the only acceptable... Um, uh, peace settlement for uh, the Ukrainians will be the restoration of the pre-2014 um, international boundaries. Uh, Russia will not want to go that far back. So they'll keep pushing now um, for peace, for a time to try and get a ceasefire to consolidate what's going on and rebuild their forces again. President Zelensky doesn't need to do that, but he does need to keep talking diplomacy to the international community. Philip, thank you. Philip Ingram with the latest there on Ukraine. We'll speak to you throughout the programme. Thank, thank you very much for the update.